The eastern United States is in a state of emergency tonight because of this massive storm, Hurricane Irene. It's causing unprecedented shutdowns, the latest being that all five New York City airports will close to inbound flights tomorrow. That's Saturday at noon. And here's the very latest updated map you see there of Irene's expected path. As you can see, the storm is still on course for a direct hit on the Carolina coast, New York City and Boston. But the danger of being in that hurricane zone actually varies depending on which side of the zone you are on. Here's ABC's weather editor Sam Champion to explain. It really does matter which side of the storm you get caught on, and here's why. If you take that hurricane and split it in half, the right side is normally what we call the dirty side of this storm. To get the real wind speed in here, you have to take the measurement of the movement of the storm and add it to the wind speed because of the way that storm is turning, and then in this particular case, it's moving north. So whatever direction that storm is moving, you cut it in half, and the right side of it has actually got faster winds than the left side, just because of the math of it all. Now, further, making that side worse and even the front of it worse is if you put another line in it and make it a kind of split it into a, qu a quadrant then that northeastern quadrant is worse with the wind and the water there in particular because as it moves on shore that's the side with the spin that hits land first and no matter which direction it's moving it's that northeastern side that'll spin that first uh, area of rain in it'll spin that first line of heavy storm surge in and it'll spin that line of first big waves in so it's that north northeastern side there that gives you the storm surge, the wind, the heaviest rain. It's why we call it the dirty side. And if you find yourself in that part of the storm, you're getting the worst effects of that hurricane. Thanks, Sam. That's where the worst will be later. We'll tell you where to find tips on what to do if you're anywhere in that zone. But right now, we want to go to ABC's Matt Gutman, who's joining me live from Nags Head, North Carolina. Matt, that right now is in the direct path of the hurricane. What are you seeing? Terry, well, it's been getting worse every single minute, even the past 20 minutes that I've been out here. The rain is coming down sideways so fast that it's stinging my face. We're still hours away from the inner eye wall, and we are, as Sam mentioned, on that dirty side. We're going to see some very rough winds tonight. Now, out there, the ocean, I just see a patch of white. It is so frothy, so whipped up by these winds. We measured a 27-foot wave not far off from our location earlier. This is still a very dangerous Category 2 storm, winds still 100 mile an hour, and very treacherous out here. Irene's winds are howling out here, and most people are now listening to the alarm bells. From Ocean City, Maryland, to the New Jersey shore, there was a steady stream of evacuees fleeing coastal areas. Tempers were short as cars lined up at gas stations. Here in the Outer Banks, nearly 200,000 people have fled, drilling a last few boards in before heading to higher ground, leaving behind a ghost town. It's pretty eerie driving down this road, absolutely empty houses boarded up when just two days ago this place was packed with summer vacationers. In these driveways, there are five, six cars just lined right up. Others heading into the storm. Professional storm chaser and meteorologist Reed Timmer took us in his stormproof car, affectionately called the Dominator. Reed, how serious a storm is this? This storm is, is really, really serious, and uh, what makes it unique is its track. Uh, in, in my 13, 14 years of storm chasing, uh, I've only seen a handful of hurricanes that will make a turn this far west and go straight north into New England. He intends to drive his beast into the belly of the storm over the next few hours. I think we're going to encounter um, some increasingly strong winds. It's going to start off gusting to tropical storm force like it is right now, and it'll gradually pick up. It'll come in waves as those spiral bands rotate around the hurricane. And then when the eye wall uh, comes ashore, that's that uh, donut hole, basically the strongest winds right around the eye of the hurricane. Uh, once that uh, hits this area, that's when you're going to get the gusts probably over 100 miles per hour. It's a storm that rocketed waves across a thousand miles of the Atlantic, knocking eight people in South Florida off a city pier. Dozens had to be plucked out of the water in the Carolinas. And over 430 miles to the north, New York City is bracing for the biggest storm since 1938. Irene is expected to be a Category 1 hurricane when it slams into the city. And Mayor Bloomberg is shutting down all 840 miles of subway track underneath the city canceling buses. He's even issued a mandatory evacuation for over a quarter of a million people living in the low-lying areas of the city.
We wouldn't be doing it now if we didn't think the storm had the potential to be very serious. Hospitals and nursing homes across the area were also given the order to start the evacuation process. Meanwhile, across the Hudson, Governor Chris Christie had a very specific group of people he wanted to make sure heard the alarms. Get the hell off the beach in Asbury Park and get out. You're done. It's 4.30. You've maximized your tan. Get off the beach. Get in your cars and get out of those areas. And as the casinos in Atlantic City start closing their doors, the question on everyone's mind is just how bad will this storm be? Farther north, places like Rhode Island and Boston may face the strongest wind and highest water surge because they'll be on the storm's northeastern quadrant, the so-called dirty side, all the wind and rain it gets. And people looking to get out of the area completely? As the hours tick by, the escape window is quickly closing. All flights into New York canceled as of noon tomorrow. Airlines have already canceled over 6,000 flights over the next three days. And while Amtrak will still be running on Saturday, the services will be reduced. And on Sunday, don't expect to catch any trains in the Northeast Corridor. The service will be shut down completely. A situation so dire that President Obama is leaving Martha's Vineyard and heading back to the Capitol. If you are in the projected path of this hurricane, you have to take precautions now. Don't wait. Don't delay. For Nightline, Matt Gutman, North Carolina.